We're just waiting to get into the game here now. Mongols against Ayubids on Himeyama. Themos piloting the Mongols and uh, Raman taking over the Ayubids on Himeyama. Now, yeah, as we mentioned, it, it, this matchup does depend a lot on uh, how the start goes. Of course, we have seen this always, almost, from Mongols, haven't we? The Tower Rush, right? The long-known oppressive Tower Rush from Mongols. It can prove to be quite significant in most matchups, and certainly here, I would say, uh, it depends quite a bit on exactly where that tower is placed on, uh, on Raman's resources. So we'll just have to wait and see whether Temos even goes for that, and if he does, where it shall be placed. Hear um, me out. You mm. fake out the Tower Rush, you go for the dock. That's a possibility. I mean, you know, four shoreline fish on the dock, that's a decent bit of food right there. And having that uh, under your belt as income, especially if you plan to be aggressive as the Mongols, can certainly help out. I would, uh, I would not be surprised to see it. And in fact, uh, somewhat expected potentially here from uh, Temos if he has the foresight to do so. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't do both because if you go for the water, then you can't really put up an effective tower rush. We'll see how they do it. There is a dock in the middle by Ramen. Now, talk to me mm. about going for an early exposed dock in the middle of the map against Mongols. It's a somewhat risky maneuver. I mean, Ayubis, as we you know. You do have a gift for understatement. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's, yeah, you could say that. Straight away, we see the barracks from Ramen here. Because, yeah, as you say yourself, Askeladd, going for the dock here is Ayubis. I mean, of course, we know that it is, in fact, half price that of a regular dock, which is definitely no bonus to scoff at here. And uh, as we mentioned, four shoreline fish is not easy, but look at that. Good foresight here from Raman, making the walls there to protect the dock from those spears. And realistically, the walls will not stop the spears fully, but it will buy valuable time uh, for Raman here. And it may be enough for him to go for an age up, get out a, uh, an archer ship from that dock and potentially ruin those spearmen's day. So basically you're saying he's wasting Themos' time by building this dock. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, look, if, if Themos opts to go for the torch on the uh, dock, uh, on the wall surrounding the dock, and then the dock, instead of opting for a tower rush, and he doesn't get that dock down, I would say Raman will find himself in a very, very happy position. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. First, Spearman already on the way here. Villager as well, crossing the mid-map now very soon. Now, Temos does see this dock without a doubt. He sees the walls with the Khan and the uh, dock as well behind it. Three ships already out for Raman. Uh, we'll have to see if more are on the way. Ten on gold here now for Raman. It looks to me like he is going to long distance mine the gold necessary to age up. But this also tells us that it will not be the, the advancement wing as yeah. could be an option here, right? I mean, so this is a pretty good option. If Femos doesn't check the gold there on the, on the uh, ore mine, then... He might not know that Raman can actually directly age up as soon as he has the food, might still go for that tower on the gold. Of course, that does uh, mean you have to clean it up eventually, but Iobits do start out with the siege engineering, so you can quite easily do that as soon as you hit feudal age. That's right. And, you know, towering the gold is certainly uh, quite a common uh, spot for the tower to go up for the Mongols here. Uh, in most matchups, right, we see that very, very often. But however, that, that wood line there next to the crucial berries for uh, the Ayubids as well would be another great spot for that tower to go up. Khan circles around in a predatory fashion around the base looking for the best spot to plant that tower with the villager and the spears. Villager uh, spears are now angling around the dock looking for a way in, but it, it is pretty walled so they will not be able to do so. The tower does go up on that northern gold and double gold actually walled for, uh, double gold actually towered for Temos there and Raman. If he doesn't get rid of that tower, there will be no castle agent sight for him anytime soon. Yeah, Raman's gonna be clicking up right about now. Let's see what he's going for. Can you tell by the immediate change in the structure of the building before you can even see how it builds up? Because there's a little indenture there. Yes, there's two options available for either wing, right? I didn't quite spot which one it is yet, but we see actually a second tower. It is, in fact, military reinforcement here for Armand, and that's a standard choice, I would say, in this matchup as well. You're going to see the Desert Raider come out soon, but a second tower, actually, going up here for Temos on the dock. And this is a wise choice, I must say. And if the Arrow Slits is researched, he will actually be able to deny at least two shoreline fish, potentially even three, maybe four, because sure, the, the shoreline fish itself may not be in range of the tower, 
But perhaps the fishing ships collecting from that shoreline fish will definitely will be. Yeah, and when they drop off, if you have five spears sitting in a tower, not saying that it's a great choice to have that, but if you can make that work, then you can just take them out as they go for the drop off because they do so much damage paired with the arrow slits. It's still a lot of investment, right? And Ramen wants to invest in the ram anyway. We see Gate now onto the wall surrounding the dock coming up by Ramen. He wants to get out with that village. He does, he does uh, pull out his shank there and take a few swipes at Themos' villager, but realizes with the Khan there and the spear is now closing in as well, he will not be able to deny that tower. We have to see if that villager actually makes it back to safety. One villager so early in the game can be quite significant. On the other side, Deerstones coming up now for Themos, four on it, so he will get there in a decent timing himself. And 18 on wood here for Ramen. So what this tells me... Uh, Hey, Ascalize, that we're definitely going to see some Fido production buildings. Yeah, I mean, he definitely needs to get clean of those towers first, so the ram is probably a given. And we know, ramen is an archer enjoyer. Yes, we has proved that fact without a set, without a doubt. Last game, of course, so many archers on the field there. Perhaps we're going to see that again this game here. Ram would, I think, be quite a reasonable choice here to get that tower down. Spears are still towards the center of the map, so if he's quick on the draw here, he could potentially even look to uh, torch it with the villagers. Of course, it's a bit rough, isn't it? Because the villagers are on the wood line on the complete other side of that initial tower, so it will be quite a bit of idle time if he decides to go for it. But no, instead it will be the ram being built by the one desert raider and an archer ship on the way so far this is working out beautifully for ramen everything he tried has worked and he's not been punished for it so far a little bit of pressure on the wood line now if the raider wasn't busy building that ram he could be defending but the archery range will be able to clean it up in just a second and famous basically just has to pull back probably he's gonna sit in that tower with his spear so they have got some, something to do and the galley is also out, so he has to take the long way around. Yes, indeed. So that galley will ensure that those spears can't harass the fishing ships working for Armin. However, that tower is not in range of that uh, easternmost uh, fishing pond there, so that will be a decent bit of food income for Armin still, despite that. Double archery range, as you mentioned yourself, Asklad, coming off uh, ramen here, which is notable, right? Uh, you obviously want archers to deal with those spearmen. Uh, they will be garrisoned inside the tower, but that ram is getting closer and closer to finishing, and with that northern tower unprotected, it will most likely go down. Now, let's see how far these arrow slits reach. I think they can actually just reach them every time they drop off, and they will barely hit the outer one. Yeah, those. Look how much damage it does. When so close to the end, it doesn't go down. And immediately goes down. It just takes two volleys and it's done. The second one goes down as well here for Amon. So with four garrison spears inside that tower combined with the arrow sticks, which I do believe is also researched there, two fishing chips go down for him as they drop off that necessary food. So certainly a little bit painful for Amon here. I, I would love to see him not reinvest further in this dock here unless he actually manages to take the tower down. We do see a little bit of clown carrying once again for Amon. The spears do come out to challenge that ram. Quick draw on the archers outside of the ramp to try to snipe the spears. They don't quite manage to get a shot off. Once again, they're drawn out and they're starting to do damage. No spears go down just yet. One archer falls, I believe, almost. Ram's already half held. The tower is burning, right? And that really, that's all you need. Dao coming in as well to so help here. And this tower definitely goes down. The spears will be picked up as well. And quite crucially, the ram still survives. Ramen is reinvesting in the fishing. Like, you don't want to overinvest here because there's really not a lot of food in that pond. And Themas, on the other hand, he's already on seven archers. Double archery range on the Uvu, so he's spending all of his stone in there as well. Deerstone have been moved forward, though. Yes, yeah, and Blacksmith now on the way for Themos as well. And we love to see that, of course. I do believe this is the right play by Themos. You want to commit to this, right? I mean, realistically, sure. Certainly, there is a significant military lead for uh, Raman on the Ayubes, and that food income will come in handy for him. But the reality is, if he is not able to get on gold, I think this will only go better and better for Temos here because in Feudal Age, especially if those Keshiks start coming out, which are, of course, uh, a great answer to Raman's archers. Uh, only the Desert Raiders are what counters them besides spears, and with 11 archers already on the field for Temos, Desert Raiders will not do too much work. You know what really just surprises me? That he actually built the ram forward, going for the one that was denying his fishing first. I feel like you just, at this point, you just pull back the fishing boats, accept the fact that you're not going to be fishing for the moment. Oh, did he not scout the tower on his gold? 
Potentially, yeah. It looks well, like he knows now. Was big damage. Yes, you are right, Ascal. You did not scout the town. One village does almost go down, but not quite. He cancels the mining camp just to deny any kind of raid bounty on the Mongol side. And now he knows he's going to have to deal with that tower. The scout does go down for Raman. Uh, vision loss, certainly nothing to, uh, to ignore here. You do want to know just the kind of units and strategies that the Mongols do go for. Uh, in smash up, especially if you look to go for that castle age. Uh, a lot of food banked up here for Raman. It's just the gold that he needs to start going now in order to go to the next stage. Samaso, he really doesn't want to let him get there. And Raman's still sitting on those 600 food. He's floating those the entire time. Archer balls are now just about equal. One side has the free desert raiders moving in there. Samus actually still has two of his spears left over, but otherwise it's all archers all day long. And Famous does have those blacksmith upgrades, and Raman just doesn't. So this is might potentially be very bad for him. Engagement right in front of the Iobit base, though. Defender's advantage is going to be critical. And the Khan is moving in, so he has that potential to just speed arrow away if he so chooses. Exactly. Steeled arrow already in for Temos on the Mongols. Iron Undermesh just a few seconds away from finishing, and this kind of an upgrade advantage could prove quite significant here as he does he in fact have the four archer lead now. Yeah. No, never mind, he gets two and the other two were fishing bows. Still, Raman is trading out here, and it's not a great trade. He really does not want this fight right now. This is quite rough, isn't it? Two fishing boats down earlier as we saw the tower do its job over there. Now two villages down uh, on Raman's side as well. It's looking a little bit tricky, right? There's no gold mining here. The tower is still up despite having access to the ram. Of course, the ram is quite slow. It is perhaps on the way towards that tower as we speak. But still, with so many arches on the field for Temos, uh, no gold yet in the bank at all for Raman. Looking for that uh, costage timing that he in fact needs. It proves to be quite difficult here, especially being so behind in upgrades. If those archers decide to get even more aggressive inside uh, Raman's base, he could look uh, to take a lot of damage if not careful. I feel like we're in a similar situation as the last game here, where one side's archer ball is just infinitely stronger at some point, because Famous can just continue to mass. Like, he's sitting on 170 stone. He is going to outmass Raman here, and he does have the upgrades, so I feel like Raman should consider that stable. And he's sitting on 900 food, which would help. I think a stable is definitely where Raman is in this kind of a position. Oh, Raman oh. overextending here. He gets caught out behind the Mongol base in a horrible position. He's going to lose all of those. Yeah, sneaky raid attempt here by Raman on the backside. Just a few archers going around, but they're well spotted by Temos as they start going down. Many die there. And the mass that Raman was already behind in terms of archers, Temos now even further behind. There's 20 to 33 archers now. More in queue for both players as is necessary. But this kind of extended feudal age is exactly what Temos wants. If he continues uh, this type of pressure, then he's looking uh, in a great spot to close this game out. Raman attempting the raid there. He is now gonna break free of his gold starvation. Going back in the banking business and is he gonna just try to leg it to Castle Age? Because he probably knows he is very far behind in the count currently. Losing that force there behind the Mongol base. I mean, there's a Deerstones, right? So this might not have been the smartest play there because you know your opponent is just gonna be faster than you. But potentially you can make it work if they're out of position. As you said yourself, legging it to Castle Age may be exactly what Raman needs in this kind of a position, but being so outmassed, I would love to see just one stable being dropped for Raman. Just getting a few horsemen to pick up some reinforcements, hit some of that pocket food. As we see, Temos is already out on that deer pack to the north, and uh, it will help just to turn the tide slightly with such a vast difference in arch numbers. Perhaps a tower or two on that gold to make sure he can't be harassed. It is what Raman needs, however. Arch is diving quite aggressively here this under the TC of Raman. Bold dive. Oh, unfortunate. Walking by the galley in the middle, taking lots and lots of damage here. But yeah, the dive was not successful. Uh, Thamos, though, he did get siege engineering, and there is the first ram. Mongols are knocking at the door, and Raman, he's getting the double broadex here. He's committing to feudal age. Please commit those 800 food, too. Yes, on the north side as well, double pronged and raid here by Thamos. But however, his mass does get a little bit caught here in the north. A few, uh, a few unfortunate trades here. He does back out, however, without losing way too many. Ram and south side, and aggressive tower here by Themos. Bringing forth five villages here to build it on. Only three berry patches left. We don't even know how much food is left in those berries. Probably not a lot. If this is a yam tower, isn't it? 
Sorry? This is a Yamto. He just wants to Yara. Yeah, yeah, most likely. You know, having that aura will be so useful. Combined with the Khan and the bonus damage from the signal arrow uh, could be quite significant in this fight, especially with an upgrade lead. But I'm not pushing forward. More of Demos's mass just being split here, right? And some good pickoffs here for Raman. This is exactly what he needs in order to help him get to cast stage. But with two Rams already taking down Howdy in his base, this is looking more and more difficult for Raman if he's not careful. The split forces for Famous here are really dangerous. If Raman realizes that the armies are basically split down the middle, he can just go and crush one of those balls. It's difficult though, isn't it? With that tower up on the south side, he can't really commit uh, down here to the south. If he goes past, he's going to start trading west. There's so many villages being idled out by them on That's Raman's side. That's a lot of dead wills too, and he can take out the small defense force that was sitting in front there. Nice dive by Famous there. Good, good oversight, good reaction. And now Ram is trying to burn the Rams. Ram's taking a lot of damage, but he bleeds out more wills. We're already up to eight dead ones. And Famous is just slowly outscaling him here, though he is also slightly mismackering, having lots and lots of extra gold. That also came from ramming down Abyssin I I you bit buildings. Exactly right. All that bounty coming in. There's too much gold to even be able to spend here, right? Tribute even. But uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Raman knows, right? He has to break out of this kind of juggle quickly, but more villages being caught out onto that western woodline. More go down. Eight villages now dead for Raman. Uh, two fishing ships as well from earlier. And, ah, I'm not liking Raman's position now, right? He has a very healthy archer count, but still no horsemen, still no castle mage on the way. He has Undermesh in now finally, but Steel Darrow nowhere in sight still. Uh, and another tower in the far back of the base of Raman denying that stone. Just giving vision, more Yam network speed, right? This is significant. This will allow these Mongol archers to keep dancing back and forth all the way around. Ring around the rosy around Raman's oh, base. Samus is going balls to the wall, just straight in towards the town center and then straight back out, leaving the Khan behind. Yes, but this kind of idle time is significant, isn't it? All this constant garrisoning, sure, he's trading away a few archers, but Already having such a lead here, uh, villages, not only in terms of military, but with the villages that he has killed earlier as well, is difficult. And now we see Keshiks on the way as well, spotted out by the down center of the map. They're coming from the north onto that wood line, and again, idled on wood, Raman is forced to go from wood line to wood line, looking for a place where those villages can finally be put to work without suffering a massacre. Oh my god, that galley has killed so many units. Yeah. You will see. The reinforcement line just needs to be adjusted by Temos here. Just imagine if he had all the units that he lost to the uh, Dao there in the center. If they were here on the front line where he needs the most, I would say this game would already be closed out. Oh, look at Temos. He's checking the top wood line in case Ramen moved out. Is that Ramen going for the full push at the bottom side, trying to push back Famos here, taking out the tower, which is going to burn down in a second. But at the same time, there's attack picks at the top. There is the Kashyyyk coming back in. Uh, Not really a reaction. There's archers here, but this Kashyyyk is just out healing them by hitting the Vils. Doesn't notice Raman losing so many villages. Not only the north side, but also on the south side when he pulled them forward. 18 villages dead for Raman on this side. Huge dive coming in from Temosem. With only one Keshik now on the front line, he will soak up a lot of arch fire, but more on the way, archers and Keshiks, and so many idle villages. TC not garrison, so not helping on the defense as well. Oh my, he, an unbelievable amount of villages have died here. And with such an archer mass, even under this TC fire, it looks like Raman will lose the mass. Still not tapping out, however. There's no coming back from this. This is, this is just not going to happen. Famous though, pulling back knowing full well he has a massive advantage. He's not throwing away the rest of his forces here. And Raman is still bleeding out villagers to the towers. Yes, so his base is surrounded by towers at this point. He did take out the one in the north and the one in the south, but another one in the back of his base that we saw. A decent little raid here by Raman, which he needs, right? This kind of comeback potential is exactly what he needs to uh, retain a presence inside of this game. Yeah, Temos did back out of that dive early, which he needed to, right? He can't stay there forever at the end of the day, but I mean... As you said yourself, Ascalad, it's such a tough spot to be in right now. I, I don't know if I see a way back for Raman here. He needs to pull out a miracle. He's 23 villagers down at this point. It is it is rough. Having the Desert Raiders there positioned on the deer pack. It was a nice little play there. 
Tim is moving out with a lot of wills, lots more idle time. Are we fighting ourselves back into this game one by one by one? I mean, the archer balls are still fairly similar. It's just the income is so different. Yes, absolutely. 40 food a minute now for Armin. Just barely enough to sustain villager production at this point in time. And, and if you look around, where will he get any more food? That's glad. I mean, he's going on to that deer pack now towards the north right, which you will need to secure desperately. Many villages building up that tower. Honestly, another tower would be needed to actually be able to hold this kind of position. However, the there is another here. tower. It's blue. <laughs> well said indeed. Another tower on the way here for them was quite a risky little move here. Those villages aren't protected. Potentially losing five villages here would definitely dwindle his lead slightly. It does get spotted out by Ramen. Well reacted there. Two villages go down and they, yeah, they will all be cleaned up here. Yeah, just a little oversellers there with memeing on Ramen here with the full tower surround. But we're going to be seeing some more pressure coming out on that food. And Famas, in the meantime, he's sitting on 800 food, kind of like how Ramen did for most of this game, but he also has access to gold. Yes, we have seen the unit production here for Temos starting to slow down after his last uh, victories against Ramen here, taking some villager kills, well, many villager kills as we saw when trading out against those archers. It does seem to be a castle age that Demos here is angry for, oh, which I think this be a This is a one. nice raid by two raiders. There's four dead villagers on the ground. Yeah, that's right. Four dead villagers. Suddenly, Ramen with 19 villager kills is uh, angling for a comeback here, attempting at least. I mean, suddenly the uh, villager disparity, although still looking mighty rough, not nearly as bad as it was merely a few minutes ago, right? However, Themos is inching closer and closer to that castle. He still has a vast archer lead over Ramen here. So I think if he just uh, stops producing, gets the gold necessary, goes for that timing, there's not much that Ramen can do. I really like this from Ramen, realizing that the Raider can't really do anything at all in direct approaches. So he's going for those raids and he finds them. Like you would not expect this to happen. There's towers everywhere, but yeah, sometimes attention just slips and you don't notice that one ping and suddenly your control group no longer reacts. That's right. In this kind of a position, when you're under pressure, That's there can definitely be a lot of value gained from just sending even if one or two units, like those Desert Raiders that we just spoke of, on the side looking for some damage, some kind of, you know, um, hope to come back from such a dire position, which Raman has done pretty well off the shore, but the Archer Mass is now angling one looking oh, towards the other. Real bad approach. Signal arrow in from Temos going forward, not wanting to overcommit here. He knows I just need to get my castle edge here, get that upgrade in, and I would be in a good spot for sure. And Raman, he's looking just a little bit confused, right? He, he wants to keep making archers. He saw that ball, he saw it's still mightier and scarier than his, but now exactly what we've been expecting, right? Askelad Krutai on the way with 16 villages. Yeah, the odds are being stacked up against Ramen here. I mean, imagine this fight. He's, ge he's getting the signal arrow upgrade, he's stacking the Kurutai on top, and then he's waiting for veterancy. If he can afford it, he's gonna go for the blacksmith upgrade too. Yeah, without a doubt, right? And, and Ramen's in a tough spot. He's continuing aggressively ma uh, massing archers here on his side because he just, he, he just doesn't know, right? He has no scout. He doesn't have a stable to train another one. He just doesn't know if uh, Themos will continue to make units here or if he's doing something else behind it. But now he will know for sure. Uh, Castle Age comes in now for Themos instantly. Veterancy on the archers queued in as well as uh, the unpacking upgrade for the Mongols here. For the unpacking speed for the Kurutai to go to the front line even faster. And uh, what's Ram's reaction here? He is looking for the casting himself, trying to bank up food, completely halted. Um, production of archers this, here. This game might be over before the Kurutai ever comes into play. Ramen here, okay, he does have that one opening in the wood line, and if Femo splits his forces here, Ramen can take decent trades, but this is still a very precarious position. Yes, nice split here on Temos' side for the Mongols and almost a full pinch being gained here by Temos. Not quite, however, if that calm does come into position with a signal arrow, which as soon as I'm cool down now, oh, there, there, it is. there it is. He's Five to seconds to veterancy. Yeah, veterancy is about to come in mid this fight, but it still doesn't matter because more archers uh, on Temos' side than Raman's. And now it's an absolute cleanup here. And Raman has to go castle behind this, but he's still so far away. and. More than half of his army here has been vanquished by Themos on the Mongols. It's just looking worse and worse. 
Yeah, he tried to trade out as well as he could. He would have access to the advancement wing if he wants to, but like, what what does it give you in that second? Like, there's 42 veteran archers with a Kurtai knocking on your door. Basically, the way out, way out of this is siege. Yes, it was a good idea there by Rahman. I mean, in this kind of a position, you have no other option, right? You need to look for some kind of raid while you're behind an age like that and about to get hit by a timing attack. But it getting spotted out can be your doom without a doubt. And that's what we're seeing manifest here in this game as double the military count here for them. 45 archers against 17, just a few amazing spears and desert raiders uh, to hold this defense for Rahman. Age up is on the way, but at what cost here? Because the Kurutai is about to plant itself right on top of that town center so many archers and with their veterans she extra health now that tc will not do nearly as much damage to them as it did before especially combined with the healing aura from the cool time those farming blueprints as well he just spent the entire wood that could have potentially been used for any sort of siege but i don't think he's even gonna get to castle age famous though he doesn't have his entire force here half of that is building the ram in the back it's a little bit of an awkward dive. He's also not opting to go for any armored units, just sticking it out with the archers. So, Ramen might still be able to hold this here. Yeah, it's just a slight premature overcommitment here by Themos. He just needs some armored units here just to help bulk up uh, his archer mass, right? I would love to see just, you know, a few men at arms here mixed in, as well as the uh, secondary ranged defense upgrade for him to, to come in. He does have two Keshiks in queue, but I'm not sure whether they upgraded just yet. And they won't be exactly what he needs now. Age up finally finishes here for Ramen. Uh, no upgrades on the way just yet, but yes, as you said yourself, Ascalad, the Mangana would be very, very valuable to have here. Not on the way yet, but he does have the resources there. Upgrades now, veterancy on the archers, as well as a uh, level two steel arrow on the way. Would this be enough? Full archer rod. We have more desert raiders coming in on Themos' side. Yes, he was forced to go for the advancement wing, like you said, and he needed it desperately and quickly at that, right? So the attempt with the Desert Raiders uh, to raid just on the southern side there on the deer pack is shut down quite quickly. It does pick up one villager, I believe, for farming transition now for armor at the this worst of timing times, right? is rough, and the food in the middle also running out. Fishing almost gone completely. Well, I mean... As soon as the farming's kicking in, it's great. You're just a little vulnerable of having spent 500 resources to gain resources later in the next five minutes. Yes, and this is spotted out by that one lone wolf, Keshik, as well, in the north side under the farms. You see, there's so many farms. I mean, the Marvin must be desperately food starved, right? It makes sense. There's no food left on the on this map and Hinyama is known for its sparse food uh, which is quite forward and difficult to protect but now Themos just relaxing a little bit gathering his forces we do see men at arms on the way as well as Keshiks behind this shamans as well to start collecting some of those covered relics in this castle age for him and you know I would have loved to see these men at arms uh, a couple minutes earlier here for Temos, but if he builds up enough of a mass, I, I don't really see Raman holding this right. He just needs enough of a mass to actually deal with that manganel. Uh, potentially improve siege engineering from the Uzu blacksmith as well. Could be coming in for Temos to look for a safer springhold to deal with that manganel. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, that Keshek finally is dealt with there on the northern side. Another push attempt here by Femos. Okay. Just needs to buy this time, be careful. Get more of those men at arm, more of those Keshek's coming in. And that Manganel will not do much once there's enough armored units because reality is Raman just cannot afford uh, any of his luxury units here right now, right? I mean, he can barely afford archers, right? That Manganel took essentially half of his resource bank to create, and now all he's doing is gathering wood for farms and then more wood for more farms uh, in order to sustain himself. I can see there being a circular definition here. Uh, Themos, though, he was sitting on so many resources. I was like, okay, he, all he needs is like two, three extra production buildings. He's getting them right now, and he's also going to be able to spend that stone, sp sticking that on the new Uru. And then we're going to see a lot of armored units entering Raman's base. There is one crossbow waiting for him, though, looking menacing. Yes, yeah, so you will need a lot more than one singular hero crossbow to hold this amount of armored units. More and more on the way, streaming across the map here for 
Temos is Mongols. We do see the charge in by the Kessi. Just fading out a little bit. And we see Temos is all over the map. But uh, Manjinique now firing towards that Kuruta. On the incendiary now. Oh, by the way, switch it, the switch it. It yes. does nothing. The Kuruta actually out heals it. Oh my god, and with such an Archer oh, Mask with a damage wow, bonus from the Kultai, two volleys is all it takes for the Archer Mask of Demos to decimate that Manganel. Now his force is completely surrounded. Raman is just hoping for the sum of grace of God that can save him in this game. Dives way past Demos towards Raman's base. He knows if he just goes for the eco at this point, he can just ignore that army, right? Look, I could kill this army, but I could also kill everything else. Exactly right, that's what Temos is thinking. Now we see the entirety of Raman's economy idled out, forced to move towards the southern side where he initially got challenged from. But I have a feeling that in the south, only more and more units are going to be waiting to cut him off. And I don't feel like he's got much left in this game, Raman. I mean, we have, the writing was on the wall for many minutes now, right? Even. Even with these archers overextended here behind um, Raman's base, this is not actually a force that uh, Raman can deal with as Temos keeps more Keshex and men at arms on the way, right? He does return his eco because he has to, right? He doesn't even have any more food to train villages. Oh, Wololo just on the south to distract the beastie. Wololo coming in. A uh, little bit of a flex there by Temos, right? As expected. But yeah, I mean, uh, it should be mere seconds here for Raman to tap out in this game, too. And uh, I mean, uh, more and more villages dropping. And there, the game is called GG 1 1. The curse is broken. We did it. We did it. It happened. That's right. Our oh. first uh, 1 1 here so far in King in the North. I'm just happy my life is full. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean, it had to happen sooner or later, right? There was no way that every single series in the tournament is going to end up being a 3-0 stomp. But here we are, we're looking, suddenly these players are looking very evenly matched, as expected, really, right? I mean, um, both aspiring professional players, right? They don't have as much as experience as some of our more famous names here at King in the North, but uh, they are hungry, as you can see, right? Uh, and I'm sure we'll see much more of them uh, in the time to come, but of course we're still mid-series, so we shall see more of them right now. As here we have the graph here, beautifully done by Cal. And uh, if you assess there, I mean, the military value lead says it all just to, uh, just to start, right? That R economy count, that dip is so hard. Yeah. And then he kind of makes it back slightly, but he needed that same miracle there two more times, and then he has a chance. Yes, you can see just there, it was a, such a sharp drop there around the 19-minute mark in favor of Temos. <laughs> Nearly half his economy got cleaved by the Mongols there. Uh, he did have, have some nice raids, some nice angles there where he picked off some villages of his own. It looked, you know, he made it look a lot closer than it seemed to initially at first, but... Yeah, I mean, it's one of those matchups is very volatile and uh, Demos, exactly as I hoped he would, he kept up the pressure that we were talking yeah. about, which is exactly what you need to do. He recognized that trading is quite greedy in this kind of a matchup and if you just go all in, what's yeah. the what's the bit going to do? The map also being so open really helps there and yeah. Raman was looking for that timing for the castle age. It was looking beautifully, like he wasted so much time with that dog, he had the extra income, he took a decent first fight, and then he moves out to get the to get the gold and realizes, hey, there's a tower on my gold. Well, <sighs> and you can oh. see from there, it only became worse and worse, right? Yeah, and that uh, ram sitting idle in the middle with that tower sitting up there was like, no, no. It hurts him quite a lot, for sure. I mean, if only he secured that gold a little bit earlier, right? Stopped unit production, just got some powers to make up the deficit in units that he had. Just a quick blacksmith, get himself steeled arrow, right? Iron under mess, just to help with the defense whilst he goes castle. I think that's what Raman needed in that game. But despite that, all kudos to Temos, right? Very well executed aggression by him, taking the W here to get himself back on an even playing ground in this series.